Bridging the gap between the bustling city of Newark and the scenic Wachung Mountains lies South Orange, a village rich in history that is now a diverse and dynamic community. Today, South Orange is renowned for Seton Hall University, dazzling architecture, gaslight adorned streets, and a vibrant downtown. One of the striking things you'll notice about this unique New Jersey community is the sheer beauty of the landscape and the parks and the mountains. Because of its distinctive style and flavor, South Orange has the appearance of a small European village carved into the mountain. South Mountain and First Mountain Lookout have served dual purposes, sometimes playing a vital role in history while also providing the simple pleasures of outdoor recreation. During the 1600s, this area was home to the Native Americans called the Muncie Tribe branch of the Lenny Lenape. In 1778, it was a lookout point during the Revolutionary War that allowed George Washington to watch the British and Hessian troops assembling in Staten Island as each army prepared for the Battle of Springfield. Although this battle was a pivotal one toward the end of the war, it is often referred to as the Unknown Battle. First Mountain's primary use since 1901 as part of the Essex County Park System and South Mountain Reservation has been to provide its citizens a beautiful natural arena with the New York City skyline posing as an equally spectacular urban backdrop. Adrian Berg, a noted radio and television financial advisor and longtime village resident, will take you on a walking tour of South Orange, past and present, so that you too can share the unique vision that has guided its development over so many centuries. You'll see why South Orange has become a haven for the arts and an enclave of cultural diversity supported by strong community ties. I'm here at St. Andrew's Church of the Holy Communion, built in 1870. Many of South Orange's founding fathers and founding mothers worshipped at this church. And the very far-sighted Reverend Louis Cameron donated at his death all the land necessary for a great community center to South Orange, and of course it's called after him Cameron Fields. It means that every single summer, everybody in this community can enjoy a pool and the camaraderie of each other. And we also have legendary baseball fields where legends like Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig swung it out of the park. Play ball.
education has been important to South Orange from the very beginning. Its first little schoolhouse, simply called Columbian, was built between 1770 and 1780, and it was located at what is today South Orange Avenue and Academy Streets. And guess what? Isaac Combs, underpaid like all teachers, got $2 per pupil per quarter. By 1815, the edifice had grown to two stories. And by 1927, we had our current Columbia High School. And that was honored two years later in the Encyclopedia Britannica for its cutting edge architecture and its great workability. And indeed today, Columbia High School graduates some of the top leaders in our country going to the top schools. And why not? They have a wonderful program. And right now we're gonna hear from a member of the Board of Education, Myla J.C., to tell us all about it. We decided over 20 years ago when we were looking for a house to move to South Orange for the schools and because it was close to New York City. When our oldest started school, we heard the elementary schools are terrific, the middle schools are okay, but the high school is not what it used to be. We decided to find out for ourselves and I'm happy to say that three children later, all of our children have had wonderful academic and social experiences here. What makes the school system here so special? We're still finding out the ways in which our children benefited from going to a school like Columbia High School. Um, as they went off to college, now that they're in the working world, they have found that they've always lived and, and worked with other students who were different from them racially, from a religious point of view, economically, interest-wise. Um, and the other reason is that oftentimes people talk about the, the student in the middle. What about my kid, the average kid? What does the school have for my kid? And that's where I think we actually do very well. It's not unusual for a parent with children in a school system to be active in the school system. But in your case, your kids are older, they've grown, and they're out. Now, why the dedication? The reason I'm on the school board now is, one, I have the time, and two, I want our schools to remain strong. I'd like to think that when my children are ready to raise their families, they'll come back here and raise them. I'm here in front of the Orange Lawn Tennis Club, an impressive structure that was actually established in 1880, then moved to this beautiful Italianate mansion in 1916. It's across from Meadowlands Park, another great area for activities of all outdoor types. And you know, I could actually feel my backhand improving as I stand in front of this continuing living monument to the good life. South Orange has always been an arts ecstatic town, but right now I think we're better than ever, attracting artists from all over the metropolitan area to both work and to live here. And why not? We've got Arts in the Park, delicious free concerts all summer long. We've got the Baird Center, a theater where you can see both modern and classical plays. And you can bring your kids to learn about all phases of the arts right there. And of course, we've got the gallery at South Orange. And now here's a special report from our very own Assistant Director for Recreation and Cultural Affairs, Judy Wilkich. Adrienne is right, South Orange is bursting with the arts. As the Assistant Director of Recreation and Cultural Affairs, I do have an unusual position in an unusual town. We are highly supportive of the arts and it's shown through the gallery that we have, the jazz concerts that we have, the theater productions that we have, and the tremendous amount of volunteers that we have working with us. By having the volunteers, it brings a lot of energy into the gallery. It brings a lot of outside ideas and, and areas that I may not know and be that familiar with, but other people bring their riches to it. And we do have five openings a year and we feature anywhere from one to probably eight artists. And we're known as a venue, an important art venue for the emerging artists to first get their work seen by the public as well as the press. Since the gallery opened in uh, 2001, the township renamed the Gallery of South Orange to Piero Gallery in honor of my late husband, who was also the co-founder with me of the gallery in 1994. Lenny Piero had a great passion for the arts. He was well-loved. He had a, a lust for life, and the Piero Gallery is now named in his honor. 
Also in his honor, I had established a foundation to acquire a Tony Smith sculpture for the town. We are very famous for our jazz concerts. We do a quiet, intimate indoor jazz series where people can see up close and personal the jazz musicians, many who live in our area. We also do arts programming. I run art classes for preschool through adults that include artists with a master, with a, a master artist who is famous for his critiques for beginners as well as advanced students. We have flamenco dancing, we have glass bead making, we have a variety of classes that most places don't have. They're all taught by professional people who are active in their area of arts and it's also a very alive place for people to come and participate in the arts as well as simply come and view the arts. Many times the art teachers will take their classes up into the gallery, view the arts, and then use the, the works in the gallery to bring emphasis to what they're teaching in their classes. We also have a theater space on the third floor that is also a very active space. Along these lines, we've evolved recently to have a new brand called The Baird. I've realized with all the hats that I wear and all of the other significant things going on in this building, the gallery that receives funding from the arts, from the State Council of the Arts, the jazz concerts that receive significant publicity through the press, our theater people, our classes here, the Baird is truly an arts destination. My name is John Lee, South Orange resident. One of the main things that I do now on the playing side is uh, I'm the program director for Dizzy Gillespie Alumni All-Stars, which came out of my 10-year association with Dizzy. And we travel all over the world uh, performing the music of Dizzy Gillespie. When I first became involved with uh, the community here, it was through Andy Brady, our Department of uh, Recreation Director. And um, we decided to do an indoor jazz series at the Baird Community Center, which we started and has now become a, an institution there. Fall and spring we do four concerts. And the Giants of Jazz, which is our annual, it's the fourth year of our annual jazz extravaganza here at the middle school every fall. And we use the funds from that to support our summer concert series, which is free to the public every July. And the community has responded very well to it. And hopefully that will continue. Hi, I'm Andy Brady. I'm the Director of Recreation and Cultural Affairs, standing here in front of Baird Community Center. The Baird Community Center is the recreational hub of the village of South Orange. The Community Center has a very interesting history. The building itself, or part of the building, was actually constructed in 1895 as a field clubhouse for the Meadowland Association Golf Club, which comprised the parks surrounding the building. In 1930, when the field club went out of existence, the building was actually used for, for what we would construe as a settlement agency dealing with the social needs of the residents of the community. And that continued until 1955, when it was used as a private community center funded through the United Community Way. During that period of time, a lot of people in the community were instrumental in the development of that agency and its activities, and one of the most prominent was William Baird. The building is named in his remembrance for the amount of effort and time he put into securing the lands and the buildings that was a critical function of the community. In 1968, the village purchased the building and the land itself for the astronomical sum of one dollar, and it is the core of our recreation and cultural affairs programs from that point on. I'm T.S. Monk, and uh... I live here in South Orange, and uh, I must say, one of the most fortunate things that ever happened to me in my life was moving to South Orange. Because quite frankly, for myself, uh, the big caveat was moving away from New York City and moving away from the jazz community. And when I got here, I found that the jazz community was here. Uh, we have people from all over the world, and I was delighted to find the broad, absolutely broad spectrum of professionals from bankers and lawyers and doctors, policemen and firemen and jazz musicians. I grew up in a house full of music. For those of you who don't know, my father was a fellow by the name of Thelonious Monk, one of the icons of jazz. And so I had many, many artistic opportunities. From the time I opened my eyes, 
Uh, the people that were around me were those like Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and John Coltrane. I got my first drum set from one of the all-time greats, a gentleman by the name of Max Roach. I'm delighted to be in a community that has afforded me the opportunity to give back to young children. Hi, I'm Jessica Finkelberg and I'm the Executive Director of the South Orange Performing Arts Center, affectionately known as SOPAC. It is uh, 34,000 square feet on three floors. We'll have a 415 seat live performance space and uh, we'll have a five screen cineplex. We're also very unique. We're a public-private university partnership. Seton Hall came on board with um, some capital monies to enhance the uh, facility plans. There are a lot of people in the arts in these communities and they all have passions and interests that have really helped me shape our direction. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, we're going to have everything from blues to bluegrass, folk to funk, everything in between. And in addition, we'll have very traditional performing arts center content like um, family programming, theater, some kinds of classical music. I have a 20 member uh, volunteer board of area residents, people with both passion for the arts and a real sense of community and a real dedication to um, creating something wonderful for the entire region. Our um, wonderful downtown location, our intimate size, and the kind of programming mix that we're going to have, I think is really going to differentiate us in the marketplace and make us unique and special and something that everybody here in this entire area can be proud of. We're standing in front of the township of South Orange Village Town Hall. It's been the administrative hub of our town since 1894, and yes, it's on the National Historic Register. It's got many original details, both inside and out, and it's had many incarnations. It was a firehouse before the fire department was moved to Sloan Street in 1930, and it was also a police station. As a firehouse, it even housed the horses that pulled the old-fashioned fire trucks, and the garages for the police cars are still there along with a few of some very large tax checks of mine. We're soon going to go inside to see what it looks like and to speak with Village President Bill Calabrese. My memory of the South Orange is always something.
time at the beautiful Seton Hall campus. It was built in 1865 on the land of former settlers. It's still the largest Catholic university in the United States. And the campus forms a bridge between historic Montrose Park and Tuxedo Park. It's well known for its academics and its arts. But if you're a basketball fan, there's only one thing you know, go Pirates! I'm Father Jerry McCarran. I teach at Immaculate Conception Seminary at Seton Hall University. In 1856, the first Bishop of Newark, James Roosevelt Bailey, courageously founded Seton Hall University in Madison. This institution for the education of future priests and of college students, however, was moved to South Orange to be closer to the populated areas and to the cathedral in 1860 after Bishop Bailey and Father McQuaid purchased from the Elphinstone brothers a property consisting of some 60 acres for $40,000. This beautiful land in Rolling Hills was suitable for college education, and Seton Hall University continued here its tradition of educating the mind, the heart, and the spirit to use Bishop Bailey's vision. The university has grown immensely it now consists of nine schools, and the university now has 10,000 students and 60, uh, 67,000 alumni, um, many of whom hold leadership positions in New Jersey. The school has a good relationship with the town of South Orange, providing some cultural and educational opportunities and receiving the support from the town as well. Uh, the university seeks today to continue its growth all the while maintaining its Catholic tradition of educating the mind, the heart, and the spirit. You protect us from damnation. You gift us with your spirit. You challenge us to love one another. As the South Orange and Maplewood communities, we see injustice and suffering every day, even here in our midst. We continue, God, to be grateful to those who still today wear the badge of courage for God and country near and far.
We've taken a very long journey together and we've had a wonderful time. And it's only fitting that we end by hearing from someone who's brand new here to South Orange. We have Raina Pomper and she's going to tell us first how she got to South Orange. Well, Adrian, I actually found this house by accident. Um, we were with a realtor going from Montclair over to Maplewood and we stumbled on the neighborhood. We had just moved back from London. It was 1998. The house was not even on the market mm -hmm. and um, we were able to buy it and I didn't know much about South Orange at all. <laughs> well, it is a town that really does attract Anglophiles, people mm -hmm. who love history and more importantly, Tell us why you stay. I fell in love with, you know, the fellow parents at the school involved in the Montrose Park Historic District Association, the PTA. My children are very happy here. There's some connection with this community. I can't even explain it, but I feel like I was meant to live here. Um, there's artists and poets and architects and bankers and lawyers and just interesting people. Um, but the main point is I, I just sense that I'm here to stay and I have no intention on moving again. Well, you've heard from our newcomers something very typical of South Orange. You come for the houses, you love the food and the music, mm -hmm. but ultimately you stay for the people. That's South Orange. Well, we hope that this journey through time and our walk through South Orange has been enjoyable for you. We also hope that our community's intense vision about where it's been where it is today and where it's going has inspired and enlightened you. We hope that we have encouraged you to do the same. Walk your own community's historical past, rediscover its treasures, and participate in creating your own exciting future. Oh, 